okay so to start with in the last class we saw about the this your drain current huh? so how to determine the drain current and then this drain current equation what we saw was like in the linear region hmm? so what i want is like in the in the linear region when your vds is less uh, this yes yeah your vds so on the x axis you have vds so uh, though you cannot see the uh, parameter on the x axis but it is vds so when your vds is less than vgs minus vt you call that particular region as your uh, linear region so in the drain in the in the linear region the drain current is directly proportional to your vds as per the equation if you will just see so the drain current is directly proportional to the vds so if you just plot the curves then we saw that the curve will look like this and up till the uh, the solid line the continuous line which you can see the curve follow the path this path but as you keep on increasing the uh, vds so as per the previous equation Uh, being that equation being the parabolic equation it should uh, follow the parabolic it should follow this parabolic path but practically when the things are observed as i have told you in the last class the current does not goes back to zero as you keep on increasing the vds but it remains constant so that's what uh, the region we call the saturation region so we'll see that what will be the current in that region and uh, then later on we will see that what happens after that so in the in the saturation region uh, this is the beginning of the saturation region so that this region is called the pinch off region so pinch off means after i mean the the uh, the channel is just uh, the narrowest at the drain region okay so it is just about to uh, pinch off at after this point so it will not uh, if you keep on increasing the vd above certain voltage which is like vd set let's say which is equal to vgs minus vt so if it is so then uh, the drain uh, the the channel will not be present there near the drain side so the point which is like at the verge after that uh, voltage after that uh, drain voltage the the channel will not uh, survive in the this drain region near the drain region that voltage is called your pinch off voltage and this particular thing is called your pinch off phenomena hmm? so at pinch off what happens pinch off occurs when your vds uh, drain to source voltage is exactly equal to vgs minus vt hmm? so that should be there so this if your gate to source voltage is like whatever gate to source voltage you are using so if that difference vgs minus vt zero is becomes equal to vds so then that re that point is called your uh, pinch off so at that point uh, this pinch off occurs so to find the pinch off current what will be the current in this particular uh, at this particular instant so what we do instead of the uh, we take the previous equation uh, which we have derived for the linear region you know so in that re that equation we just substitute vds is equal to vgs minus vt okay so when you substitute vds is equal to vgs minus vt in the previous equation so what you get is this equation hmm? so this equation is your mu and cox this uh, so in the previous equation here there was vds and then uh, minus vds square so that what we have done we have substituted uh, we have substituted vgs minus vt0 in this uh, instead of vt0 vds so what we got is this equation hmm? so this equation basically is your drain current equation in the saturation region hmm? so you see this this particular thing now says that uh, uh, this ig will be equal to half of mu n cox w by l into vgs minus vt zero whole square if you are using if the body is grounded if the body is not grounded then you will use vt certain other vt which you have derived in the uh, in the previous classes that uh, what will be the threshold voltage okay uh, when the body is not grounded so we have to use that voltage here if the body is not grounded in that case right and you can see uh, from this equation that this equation particularly after this point Uh, after this particular point which you can see from this dashed line okay so this is like uh, uh, this this dashed line is showing the uh, pinch off okay uh, so it is showing you the pinch off point hmm? 
So for every curve, the pinch off will change depending upon how much gate voltage you are applying, gate to source voltage you are applying, right? And this curve also shows you that uh, this particular thing after this point is like remains the, the drain current remains constant. Okay, why it remains constant? What does this equation says? This equation says that uh, the drain current does not depend upon VDS after this point. Okay, it remains constant as you keep on increasing as, as you keep on increasing the drain to source voltage still the drain current does not change so that this particular region because this uh, ideally the 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 line should get mm, uh, at this point parallel to the x-axis so the drain current remains constant after this drain voltage and it does not depends upon uh, drain to source voltage mm. this equation says that okay but practically what happens when you keep on I mean this particular thing let's let's try to understand this with a with like change in the gate to source voltage and then I'll move on to uh, the other thing hmm? the other discussion which I wanted to uh, do so you see when your gate voltage uh, this particular graph is the same graph which you have seen but this graph is now uh, this gate uh, this gate voltage with respect to the uh, this drain current okay so the drain current you have uh, taken on the x-axis on the y-axis and the gate voltage you have taken on the x-axis so in that case what happens we know that uh, there will be no current before the threshold voltage okay ideally there should be no current before the threshold voltage and in practical devices also if there is some current it will be very small okay so that is what it means that up till threshold voltage there will be no current and after threshold voltage the curve will be uh, something like this okay so it will keep on increasing this so the drain current keeps on increasing hmm? so that is what the previous like in this curve you can see that this the dashed line so this is what it is showing here. Hmm? Okay. So uh, let's now move on to what happens when we keep on increasing. So that was the case of pinch off. So the beginning of the saturation region. Now when the saturation region uh, is like started, uh, you as you have increased the uh, d uh, this drain to source voltage beyond VGS minus VT, and as the as the as the device is now operating in the saturation region now if you keep on increasing vds beyond vds vd uh, set which you have decided as vgs minus vt so now what will happen hmm? so what will actually happen is let's try to discuss that okay and this particular thing is called channel length modulation why this is called channel length modulation because at pinch off the channel will be will be just uh, will be just touching the drain region hmm? after that if you keep on vd uh, increasing the vd set uh, v, the vds then what will happen the theoretically the the channel uh, should get shortened hmm? so the channel with change in vds the channel length changes so that is what why it is called as modulation uh, channel length is changing the, the length of the channel itself is changing after your vds uh, surpasses VD set. So this particular phenomena, how to incorporate this thing into the drain current equation? So that is what the aim is. Huh? So how to incorporate this channel length modulation into the drain current equation? So to have the uh, when we are like trying to calculate the things, we should be able to calculate the things correctly. So that is why we want to incorporate this effect, channel length modulation, or like how the things will, how the current will get affected if the channel length itself gets reduced. Okay. And it is not like reduced at a certain constant uh, length. It is like changing with change in the uh, VDC, VD, uh, VD set hmm? or VDS. So how to incorporate this? So, so you see what is happening and, and, and let's see. Uh, my question is like uh, as per the discussion what we have done is after this pinch off occurs. So what happens? The length of the uh, channel i mean there is no channel near the drain region in this in this particular region because the channel is extincted completely okay after this uh, vds is beyond vd set there is no channel here but still the current does not remain does not goes to zero okay so that is what the the the, 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 the linear equation was telling okay that when this current when this there is no channel region in this region so the current should go to zero okay but practically 
what people have observed that it doesn't goes to zero. So uh, they were like very much curious that what is the reason? Why it is happening? Hmm? Why this current theoretically is not going to, uh, practically it is not going to zero. So after a lot of uh, due diligence, uh, due research, they found the reasons that particularly this is happening because of the high electric field which is present in this region. So what is happening up till this point L dash 0 to L dash the charge carriers were flowing uh, like as per the uh, discussion as per the analysis which we have done in the previous classes uh, in the previous like linear region and the saturation region. So up till here it is okay. But you see this region it is is very small del L. So it is very small and this point is at uh, you are like it is a high voltage point and this point is at VD set. Okay. So the difference whatever the difference is between VD set and whatever voltage you have applied. So as you keep on increasing this voltage, so this this difference, the uh, the difference between VD set and VDS also increases. Okay. So you you know that your electric field is like proportional to the voltage. Okay. E is equal to you know dV by dL, right? So you see this change in voltage is actually affecting this electric field. And as this length is very small and this voltage being very high, this electric field remains very high in this region. So because of that, what happens, whatever charge carriers are re reaching here, because of the high electric field present here, they get attracted into this field and passes to the and reaches to the drain region. Okay. So if like you have, I mean, this should, this point should be clear because if you're like uh, want to go into the field of uh, VLSI, so if I mean people emphasize on this particular thing during the interviews that why this current is like not reaching to the zero, why this current after the pinch off still is there. Theoretically, uh, people may try to confuse you that as there is no channel, the current should reach to zero. But this uh, particular thing should be clear that this is like happening because of the high electric field in this region. So that is what the explanation for this like why the current exists after the pinch off region and as you can see the uh, the uh, under the drain and the source region the depletion region is also changing so that we will use later on uh, but the, the diagram shows that right so how to incorporate this particular change in uh, length into the equation so it's not difficult to incorporate that it's simple but this explanation that why the current exists is important hmm? so that I have explained already now and uh, let's try to uh, see the how to incorporate this particular phenomena into the equation. So to incorporate this phenomena what we do as our channel length is like earlier it is from it was from 0 to L now it is from 0 to let's say some point L dash. So instead of writing L we write L dash in the equation okay so the saturation region equation we will not take the linear region equation why? Because this all thing is happening into the saturation, not into the linear region. So there should not be confusion that why this region, why this equation is taken. Okay. So in the saturation region, in the saturation region, if you take this equation and instead of writing L in the previous equation, we just write L dash, then uh, we are able to incorporate this. Then you know that uh, L dash can also be written as what? L minus del L. Right? So, okay. Sorry. So uh, what you can write it as L minus del L. Hmm? So L minus del L, uh, here it will come. And if you just uh, take L common, so the equation will become something like this in this equation, if you'll see. So it will be uh, one minus. So in the denominator, you will get this term one minus del L by L into this particular thing. Right. And as I have already told you that this change in length is actually proportional to some VDS, right? Because as you are changing the VDS, uh, this this will also, this is directly proportional, I should say, okay? And not directly proportional. Actually, if you see the relationship, you will try to find the relationship empirically. So what people have observed is that it is a uh, change in length is uh, like proportional to square root of VDS minus VD set, right? So that is what the thing is. Uh, and to incorporate that, particular thing we just uh, use a constant and that constant is called your channel length modulation and it is denoted by this particular thing lambda. So this particular thing 1 minus del L by L we, we incorporate this uh, channel length modulation by this phenomena we equate this to 1 minus lambda VDS right because the uh, we want to see that how VDS is changing the drain current 
okay itself the drain current how the drain current equation in the saturation region gets affected by vds after the saturation region so that is why we have used vds here and if you use vds here then you will see that uh, you use a constant and that constant is called the channel length modulation so in this equation instead of 1 minus del l by l we use this okay 1 plus lambda vds why because you see here it will be equal to because uh, you see this this particular thing is in the denominator 1 minus del l by l so this thing should go into the denominator 1 minus lambda vds and if you just see uh, so it is written like 1 minus lambda vds to the power minus 1 okay in the numerator we can write it like this so minus 1 if you uh, solve it by your uh, uh, exponential method so you will see that you can write it as 1 plus lambda vds so this is binomial expansion if you uh, remember from your previous like classes so from that you know that you can write the expression as 1 plus lambda vds instead of writing it as 1 minus lambda vds to the power minus 1 you can write it uh, you can expand if you expand it it will become like this so 1 plus lambda vds so this equation if you use uh, which is mu n half of mu n c ox w by l vgs minus vd whole square into 1 plus lambda vds then you know that the drain current is like changing with vds it is not remaining constant after vgs minus vt okay in the saturation region the drain current doesn't remains constant but it changes so actually practically something was happening which we are not able to explain with the help of the equations so we try to incorporate things which like can explain the phenomena there in the uh, what is happening practically into the device so that is what the uh, reason why we do all this research and do this analysis okay and uh, the typical value of this lambda is like very low it is approximately 0.1 or uh, 0 0.2 so it is approximately uh, if, I, if i correctly remember it is 0 0.1 or i mean it is less than one okay very much less than one so if it is very much less than one so typically it is 0 0.1 0 0.2 somewhere hmm? uh, okay so that is what the thing is so the effect of this thing if you'll just see so what will happen into the this this particular curve emphasizes this thing that if you incorporate the channel length modulation achha, one more thing this equation doesn't tells you the exact behavior it is actually the approximation okay of whatever is happening hmm? so if you'll just uh, uh, see ki this is like actually happening and uh, this is the thing lambda if you'll incorporate if you include in the equation then you'll get the exact values no it's it is not going to give you give you the exact drain current uh, value or drain current value of uh, like it, of the practical device it will give you the approximate value okay still the approximate value because there are many other phenomena which are happening inside the device okay inside in into the linear region into the saturation region so whatever region you are considering these equations are giving you the rough calculation so if you are like calculating uh, on page uh, pen and pa i mean uh, using pen and paper so these equations you can use for a approximate for a rough like a, a, a rough approximation but for this simulation you will use you will incorporate many other phenomena which we will discuss in the upcoming classes which will be called as the uh, second order effects or the short channel effects and the narrow channel effects that we will discuss in the next few classes okay after this after completing this but this channel length modulation gives you uh, like very good approximation that how the drain current will change into the saturation region so in this curve you can see uh, like two lines for uh, each of the uh, vgs so you see the the lower line which is parallel to the x-axis is without the channel length modulation whereas the upper line is like without i mean uh, considering with channel uh, considering the channel length modulation so the channel if the channel length modulation is present then drain current changes okay increases gradually with increase in vds okay so that equation was also telling you the same thing the drain current increases after uh, in the in the saturation region okay but it increases very slowly it, is, it does not increases very rapidly so that slow increase that gradual increase is shown here hmm? that it gets the the drain current gets slanted if you plot the curve so then it, it will get slanted slightly slanted in the uh, saturation region okay so this was all about the drain current equation in this three regions or I should say in the cutoff, if you'll talk about in the, if you'll talk in the cutoff region, so in the cutoff region, 
the drain no current no drain current is present so id is equal to zero whereas in the linear region you have certain equation in the saturation region you have certain other equation for approximation you can use channel length modulation okay so that's what it is uh, so in summary if we just see so the drain current equation uh, are like uh, is like the function of vgs vds and the body uh, this uh, uh, bulk to source potential as well body to source you call it substrate to source potential as well so this three parameters affect the drain current equation so this drain current equation is shown for both the n channel device as well as for the p channel device so when your vgs is less than vt then the device will be in the cutoff region so id will be equal to zero in case of nmos and you will also see that the equations for the PMOS is exactly opposite of the uh, NMOS equation. So if the gate to source voltage is less than threshold voltage, then at that time, the cutoff region is occurring in, uh, in NMOS. So uh, the, cut, the cutoff region in PMOS will be there when VGS is greater than VT. Okay, so that you should remember. And for the other two regions, which is like, which are uh, linear region and the saturation region, if you see the equation, so whenever like uh, you have to use any equation, like uh, if you are confused, like which equation you should use. So first you have to identify that in which region the device is working. So to identify that, we have to check two conditions. So what are these two conditions? First is gate to source voltage should be above threshold voltage. If gate to source voltage is not above threshold voltage, then the device should work in cutoff region or in sub threshold region, I should say. Hmm? More specifically, we call the device to be working in the such sub-threshold region. Whereas, if the gate to source voltage is above threshold voltage and simultaneously, if VDS is greater than VGS minus VT, then the device will work in saturation region. If VDS is less than VGS minus VT, then the devices will work in the linear region. So that you have to identify for every transistor which is there into the circuit. So if the circuit is having like single transistor, then it will be very easy for you to identify it. But if it is having multiple transistors, then it becomes a little difficult or tricky to identify those things. And you should learn being an being an uh, like uh, engineer, uh, we we like we should be able to analyze these things. It becomes like uh, difficult for us as well. But once you analyze the things, uh, you will be able to identify. I mean, when once you'll practice something, some of the some of the circuits over to the on to some of the circuits then you will be able to identify these things that which circuit is working in which region and what should be the voltage drop across that uh, voltage should be and uh, what should be the drain current equation we should use for that uh, particular transistor and this is not only helpful in this course but it will be helpful for the other course which will study in the uh, next semester uh, linear integrated circuit so some of you may be there in that course so that in that course also we have to identify because there we have to use uh, this big circuits. Here in this course we are not going to uh, use big circuits because this is an introductory course for this VLSI. But in the next semester uh, that course will be a little advanced for the analog circuits. Okay, uh, so analog circuit application. So there you have to like in the big circuits when you are when you will make op amps inside the op amps or you'll make the circuits with op amps. So that time you have to analyze this thing that which circuit which transistor is operating in which region. So it's better to have that, uh, that keep this thing in mind that how to identify that. Okay. So I've uh, like emphasized, overemphasized the things. Okay. Uh, and these are the equations for the PMOS. So in the PMOS, the equations remain same. The only thing which, cha which changes is this condition. So the condition gets exactly reverse. Okay. So why this is happening? Because the the uh, the charge carriers which you have to attract in PMOS are the negative charge carriers. Uh, sorry, the positive charge carriers. And to attract the positive charge carriers, you have to apply negative voltages. And if you consider everything in the negative in terms of negative voltages, then you will see that the negative voltage is exactly. I mean, negative numbers are exactly opposite of the positive number. So, oh, so that is what the reason is. These conditions become exactly opposite. And in this equation, you will also see that uh, the mobility which you will use for the charge carriers will be uh, of uh, holes, not of the electrons. Okay, So that is what the difference is. Otherwise, the things are same. Same equations can be used for linear region as well as for the, I mean, uh, for the PMOS as well as for the NMOS, right?
So let's move on to the last topic of today's discussion. So in this discussion, we will see that uh, in, in the laboratory, if suppose you want to find that what are the these parameters, okay, how to find the, the, the values of this parameter into the laboratory. laboratory. So typically, uh, if you are like using a transistor or if you are using an IC and you want to identify that what are the parameters, this particular uh, constants for this, whatever constants they are, uh, because you, you in these equations, there are many constants. So you, if you want to identify like what is the value of those constants in the equation, then for that we do certain experiments. So these experiments can give you the value of threshold voltage uh, when the body is grounded and when the body is like at certain voltage also then that threshold voltage also you can find. Okay. Apart from that we can also find we, we are able to, we are we can also uh, find the body uh, this body effect uh, this body effect and the body effect coefficient also the gamma also you can find you, you can also find uh, this uh, transconductance parameters kn and kp kn for a, if you are using an nmos kp if you are using a pmos right and we will be also able to find the channel length modulation which is lambda but for that we have to do a certain other experiment that we will see in the next slide so to find uh, this particular uh, this three parameters vt0 or vt vt vt0 and then the body effect coefficient gamma and kn transconductance parameter what we have to do so what we have to do here is uh, make this setup okay and i'll try to explain you that uh, uh, what are the things there happens if you make this setup and then how uh, what what are the plots we will uh, make and how you will be able to identify that so what we do is we just do the setup and in the setup, we use what? This is your uh, a MOSFET. Let's say this is an NMOS. So in this NMOS, this body is like body is connected to certain voltage VSB, hmm? and this voltage is like is kept at a certain voltage VSB. We can change. So we will make it. Let's say first zero, and so let's say first this is zero. Okay, and once I mean this is like this terminal is directly grounded. So if this is grounded, you will get certain curve. If this voltage is at certain voltage, if this is this point body is at certain voltage, then you will get some certain another condition. So let's first consider that this body is connected to some voltage, which is variable, which can change. Okay, first thing. Then the second thing is this drain, this drain of the device and the gate are connected together hmm, in this circuit. So I'm like, I'm trying to emphasize like what is important, what when you, whenever you have to uh, do a experiment to identify these things to measure these things then what we have to do so connect the uh, this gate and drain together by connecting this gate and drain together we assure that the device will work always in the saturation region okay why why this happens because you see to operate the device into the saturation region we have to satisfy the two conditions first is gate to source voltage should be greater than threshold voltage so as you are applying some voltage on the gate side, so I assume that this will be there. So that is like we have to uh, we have to assure that the gate voltage should be greater than the threshold voltage, gate to source voltage. Then the second thing is which we like for that we connect this gate and drain together. The reason is like we always this particular connection always assures that the VDS will always be greater than VGS minus VT. Okay. So this particular connection assures that and how it assures because you see drain to source voltage this is this is your drain if your drain and gate are connected together then whatever voltage you are applying here the same voltage is present here as well okay but the actual voltage which is present over to the gate to source is like vgs minus vt and if you connect vds and vgs together then this voltage vgs minus vt will always be less than vds right so this particular connection is like assures that the device will always work in saturation region. So not only here, but later on also, if you'll find just, just see, I mean, this device, whenever this drain and gate are connected, the device will always work in saturation region. And you don't, you should not be having any confusion that which equation you are going to use. Okay. So whenever the drain and gate are connected together, this type of device is called the diode connected device. Okay. Because now there are only two terminals and the device will be in the saturation region and the equation which you will see is something like this equation. Okay, So it is like sort of uh, this diode equation, uh, diode type of equation. So this type of uh, uh, 
device in which the drain and the gate are connected is also called the diode connected device. So you should be able to understand this. And the device can be used as a diode after connecting this gate and drain together. So this connection assures that your gate and drain are, I mean, gate and drain are connected and the device is working in the saturation region. Now we have used an ammeter to measure the current uh, in various situations. And then we have this drain to source voltage. And this drain to source voltage is like we kept, keep it equal to, uh, as you see, as you can see here that they are connected. So VDS will be equal to VGS. So no problem in that. Okay, and VGS minus VT will always be less than VDS. So that is like what is assured. Okay, so VDS will be always greater than VGS minus VT. So drain the device will always work in saturation region. Now, in this region, if you just write the equation, then your equation will be in the saturation region. As you know, uh, we are neglecting the channel length modulation here because for channel length modulation, we have to do our other experiment. Okay, we, we want to measure these things. So, we are ignoring the channel length modulation here in this equation and we are writing the equation without channel length modulation. So the equation will be this, right? Now in this equation, if you uh, take the square root of this particular thing, okay? So then you will see that the square root of the drain current will be equal to this thing. And now we have, uh, if you try to plot this thing, uh, square root of the drain current on the y axis and uh, the gate to source voltage on the x axis, then we can see that for source to body, uh, I mean, so uh, the body grounded, we get particularly this curve. Why this curve? Because you see this equation. This equation is like, uh, like the equation of your uh, straight line. Okay. So this is giving the slope under root kn by 2 is like uh, treating as a y is equal to mx plus c if you'll just see. So this is your slope and this is uh, like certain constant you know, x-axis. So this is like looking like a constant plus c, plus c, I mean some intercept on the y-axis. So as there is no intercept on the y-axis, so c is terms as 0. So this equation is like your uh, straight line equation. So that is why this curve is looking like a straight line. Hmm? So that should be clear to you that why this is like, uh, why we've not plotted it uh, somewhat inclined or something like that, but why it is like looking like a straight line. So the reason is this equation is looking like a straight line. Okay, so if you just do this, then from this equation, uh, if you plot this curve, uh, various points for various voltages of, uh, for various, this gate to source voltages, okay, if you just plot uh, these points on this curve, and if you just see that what will be the, what is the value of square root of id, uh, then you will find, you will get this equation. That's this particular straight line. So from this straight line, if you'll find the slope of the curve, slope of this straight line. So the slope of this straight line will give you this particular thing, under root. Uh, the trans under root of this uh, k by 2. This is written here as well. So k n by 2, uh, you can find from this, the slope of the curve. Then whatever intercept you, ha you have on the x-axis, okay, so that will give you vt0, right? vt0 you can identify like this. Then the second thing which you have to uh, find is like if you are, if you use certain other voltage here, rather than grounding this terminal, if you use certain other voltage, then the line will get exactly shifted towards the right side. So then in that case, you will find that what is the threshold voltage at that particular uh, body voltage. So if you uh, apply certain body voltage, so in that case, what will be the threshold voltage that you can identify by the same plot. VSB here, you can see that as this plot is for greater than zero, VSB greater than zero. And this case also, the slope will give you this uh, uh, transconductance parameter. All right. Now, the other thing which you have to find from this experiment is the body effect coefficient. So how we can find the body effect coefficient? By using these two curves, okay, uh, both the curves like uh, VT0 curve and VT1 curve. When the body is like grounded and when the body is not grounded, it is connected to certain voltage which is greater than zero. If you uh, take both these curves, then you can find the gamma or the body effect coefficient. So how to uh, find, uh, find the body effect coefficient? You see, what we have done is you have taken this threshold voltage first, which is VT1 here. Okay, so this VT is showing you that uh, the VT voltage, this VT at certain, uh, when the body is connected at certain voltage. So VT is at, uh, when the body is at certain voltage. So this VT is this. Now, if you subtract this from the, uh, this particular voltage, which you have identified for VT0, 
uh, when, when, when the body was grounded, so Vt0. So if you just take the difference of this two, then you, I mean, this gamma equation you know from our previous discussion that we know that we can write the gamma in this form. Okay, because we know that Vt, we have, we have written the equation for Vt, which was equal to Vt0 plus gamma into something. So that something was this, hmm? this particular phenomena. So this is coming in the denominator. And uh, to know this, you should know the Fermi potentials of this. Phi f should be known to you. Okay, then only you can find the gamma for this. Okay, and this Vsb is your body voltage, which are whatever body uh, voltage you are using. Okay, so it, it is this, this, in this equation, if you'll see, you will see, you can see that it is source to body voltage, not body to source. So that is why it is shown here negative because you are like considering the source voltage with respect to the body. Okay. So this was uh, uh, how this was all about how you can uh, determine the various parameters like the threshold voltage, the gamma and the transconductance parameter. Now let's move on to the another experiment where we can find lambda. So in this, to determine the lambda, what we do is we do the experiment and this experiment again, here we use certain gate to source voltage, brain to source voltage, an ammeter and the device. The only thing is the gate and the drain are not connected together. But still, we assure that the device should work in the saturation region, okay? So for both the cases, in both the experiments, the device should work in the saturation region. In the first case, we connect gate and drain together. Okay. But here we make the certain arrangement um, that, so that the device still works in the saturation. Okay. Why this difference is there? The reason is in the previous case, we were changing gate to source voltage. Whereas here we'll keep the gate to source voltage like certain constant value. Okay. Uh, we'll take two values only. So that is what it is. So you see, what will happen is like here in this case, the gate to source voltage, we made constant. And what is that voltage we, which we have used here? This voltage we use here at the gate to source voltage is one volt above the threshold voltage. Okay, why why we use this particular thing? You will understand it uh, in, a, in a short while we'll, uh, when we will discuss the equation. So the gate to source voltage we use as threshold voltage plus one volt, one volt higher than the threshold voltage. Okay. So this is like constant. Now, once this is constant, then we change this drain to source voltage and we see that how the drain current is changing. Okay. So that is what the thing is. Now, what we do is just see like why, why, why we have used this VGS equal to, let me uh, like explain that why we have used this VGS is equal to VT0 minus plus one. Okay. So you see this equation. This is the equation with channel length modulation. Why we use this equation? Because you we have to identify channel length modulation. So if we don't use the channel length modulation equation, then we cannot we cannot like find that. Okay. So to find this, uh, we use this equation. So in this equation, if you just substitute VGS is equal to VT0 plus one. Okay. So you will see that in this equation, this part particularly will have only one there and the square of one will be one there. So you, you get the equation ID in terms of the scan by two into this. Okay, and the device transconductance parameter will be constant. It will not change from experiment to experiment. If you just uh, keep on changing the VDS, the transconductance parameter will not change. Okay, because mu n C ox, because what is this transconductance gain? It is mu n C ox W by L. So all the things is constant for the device. So this transconductance parameter will also become constant. So then you can say that the drain current is directly proportional to one plus lambda VDS, right? And what we do is therefore we take two values of drain to source voltage one and then second value and then we see that what drain current we are find, finding and then we take the ratio of this two and if you take the ratio of this two you can easily identify you can easily find from this that what is your lambda okay if like the other transconductance parameters you don't know the transconductance parameter that will like get cancelled out if you take this ratio right and this particular thing you can see that why this is happening here. So this is actually nothing but the slope. This lambda is nothing but the slope of this curve. Okay. So you can see from this equation as well that for two different values of VDS, if you just find, you'll get this ID1 and ID2. And from there you can find the lambda itself. Right. So this was all about uh, today's discussion. I think 
and in the next tutorial probably you will see the questions related to this as well the drain current how to find the drain current and then uh, how to find these parameters in a certain experiment okay so this is also important so this type of numericals are there these numericals are also very simple you have to they'll be little tricky not uh, that simple as what you have to do the just just substitution of the uh, formula but little tricky and you will understand that uh, in the tutorial class if you are not then i'll uh, explain it in the next class okay so i hope the things are clear to you now by now and if you have any doubts we can clarify them now so please go ahead with your doubts if you have any and let me stop the discussion here and the recording as well